<laughs> Come on, Noreen. Because the, because the church sent you, right? So you had to give your report. <laughs> so I want you to give your report on camp meeting. <laughs> okay, camp meeting. Is so, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Camp Mini was so excited that I've never experienced anything like that in my life. Uh, some coming close, but nothing like this. You know, I'm from a Baptist background, so I had to sometimes venture out other places to get what I need. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, the, the just starting off, let's just beginning to starting off with the uh, gathering, the un, un, unit, 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 unit gathering. And the spirit came in there so strong, you know, and the power of God, you can just feel the power of God, the, the wind was blowing. And then at one point uh, during, I can't even remember which service it was, but we could even hear, feel the, everybody felt the earth, it was just moving. <laughs> at first I thought this is an earthquake or something, but there, there was no reported earthquake in the area. And that we know that was God's, God's presence. And uh, to, to see the people that were healed and set free and the children, oh my God, that was so inspirational to see the children filled with the Holy Spirit and the young man just blessed beyond measure by the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon him. And uh, that song that they created was, uh, we, it's a spiritual song because it was definitely of the spirit of God. And the it, everybody was just caught up in that. And that young man, God just blessed him real good by filling him with the Holy Spirit. That was outstanding. Now in our tent, uh, uh, Dr. W.T. Davis and I uh, were under the Holy Spirit tent, baptism of the Holy Spirit tent. And we worked together like hand and glove. It was just a beautiful relationship that we had in there. The Holy Spirit just moved. Uh, most of the people that came in there had already been baptized with the Holy Spirit. They just wanted to know how to, how they can baptize other people in the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and to be refreshed, you know, we, we need to be filled over and over and over again. Every day we need filling because if we're really doing the Lord's work, we're going to be drained like batteries, you know, and we have to be recharged. And so this is something we need to do every day. And I told, taught them the value of being able to speak in tongues because uh, sometimes people will say, I have an unspoken request. Well, what are you going to pray for? You just do the shotgun prayer. That's not going to work. <laughs> right. So if you pray in the spirit, you know that you're going to be praying the perfect prayer you know that you're going to be praying what needs to be prayed according to the spirit. And uh, sometimes, you know, God will give you the knowledge of what you're praying for. Sometimes he won't. And then, um, but then I know I asked God one time, well, why don't you always tell me what I'm praying for? He said, sometimes it's none of your business. So that, <laughs> I told, I taught them the value of praying in the spirit. But anyway, so we had, so most of them, everybody who wanted to be refilled got refilled and those who needed to be baptized in the Holy Spirit got baptized. One young lady, God had called her into the ministry. She got wonderfully, she'd never been baptized in the Holy Spirit and she'd been seeking. And, uh, and she's been having this, some struggles in her life, you know. But she got wondrously delivered and baptized in the Holy Spirit. And I think the whole, the entire, just the entire atmosphere, all everything that happened, the Spirit just moved as he willed. And I liked it. I, I, and I have to uh, uh, give kudos to Dr. Vaughn because she let the Spirit have his way. You know, instead of having a, a set program, <laughs> you know, we had a program, you had a plan, but we, but if the Holy Spirit had another plan, you, she didn't let uh, her plans interfere with the Holy Spirit's plans. Mm -hmm. And that's, I just love that. And as an add-on, let me, let me tell you what happened after I came back. Yeah. After I, I came back, uh, um, my pastor, he slowly, remember, I'm a member of a Baptist church. My pastor's Holy Ghost filled and gradually, we're, we're just gradually getting people. They just now accepted women preachers, okay? They're, they're finally fine with that. Now we're gradually getting the baptism of the Holy Spirit in there, okay? So um, he had the uh, material that I used for the baptism of the Holy Spirit up in, at the camp meeting. He asked, we have about, we have eight uh, associate ministers, about really five of us that are really regular, but eight 
associate ministers. He, he had me give a copy to each of their associate ministers to make sure they had. Now, four of them are baptized in the Holy Spirit. We're working on the others. Anyway, uh, and then uh, finally we had, um, because of COVID, uh, we didn't, we haven't had any like new members or things like that. My, uh, okay, okay, I thought it was freezing up. Okay, we, we hadn't had, we had some people come in to profess Christ. You see, if they come in, you don't see them anymore. They didn't come to uh, follow up. Pastor had already approved for us to teach the baptism of the Holy Spirit in our uh, follow up. So finally, we got one, and she would, she, and she enjoyed the full follow up class. And uh, a couple of Sundays before last, we taught her about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We, I went through, I used the same procedure I used at camp meeting. She got marvelously filled with the Holy Ghost and was speaking in tongues and uh, pastor was elated. Anyway, so God is moving in Kentucky. <laughs> that is so exciting. And Dr. Skillman will be manning the same tent in St. Petersburg. That's her tent. <laughs> <laughs> That's our assignment. Amen. Amen. And, uh, you know, I just feel the power of God right now. Hey, hallelujah. Just the power of God as it moved. You know, you had to be there. Dr. Noreen, yeah. come on, baby. Come on in here, Blondie. <laughs> Listen. Crystal, get ready. Ingla, get ready. Hey, Lania, I'm telling you, it was amazing. Dr. Noreen, what did you see? What did you experience? Listen. I, <laughs> I'm still, I'm still, I'm so excited. I tell you, I've never seen anything like it. I, I've, I've been to a whole lot of conferences, been to a whole lot of these conferences, Church God Pride, you know, and no one ever was consistent. You know, you go to one little thing and, you know, you sit and you shout and you jump around and, and you do all that, and but not learning. And so when I went to um, the teacher's class, I'm telling you right now, he was amazing. He, he taught us some things realistically that a teacher would need in that gifting and, and how to cultivate it. And so I was very appreciative of that. Then I went to just being nosy. I went over and sat in the prophets class. And I'm telling you that dad going teacher, he did a um, shipment, I think his name was, his name was Shipman. And he, he, we, you know, we're social anyway. So we laughing and we talking and we doing all that. And then when we got down to business, and I've never in my life, the Holy Spirit fell up in there and we began to prophesy. Well, I didn't know this lady from, from Adam. And when, the, when he said to hold their hand and to close your eyes and to hear what the Lord is speaking to you about this person. And I'm telling you, I never centered myself like I did in that place. Now we was at the, you know, the master class um, in October, and I'm telling you that when I read that book and it helped us the spiritual formation, and that we have to take time to to, to have time find a place. The, Dr. Ingram said to find a place and to sit and to fellowship with God. And when I did that and held that woman's hand and the Lord just showed me and he, and, and that, and when I said it out of my mouth, it was like a release. And sure enough, she identified with what the Holy Spirit had said. I was thrown back. I didn't say nothing else the rest of the day. I was so quiet. They was like, what's wrong with you? I, I was like, no, I, I had an experience that I have never had before. And I said that, and I said that I, I'm, I have to, you know, take it in and be quiet. But then the icing on the cake is when I got baptized. Glory, hallelujah. 
when I went in that water, before I went in the water, before I went in the water, I don't know who he was. Um, there was a young man sitting next to me. And he just whispered in my ear to release me from the grief that I was carrying for 20 years. My God. I didn't know him. I didn't know him from nowhere. And he said to me, he said, he whispered in my ear and he said, new birth, new life. I'm telling you all, I still feel it right now. I, yes. I was, it was uncontrollable. I, the tongues came like never before. I tell you, I was so happy to get in that water. I had told you that, Bishop, months before. I said, when I get there, I got to go in the water. I got to, I got to do this. I only got baptized when I was little and was put in the water, didn't really know who or what, but I tell you that day, I'll never <laughs> forget that day. Because I'm telling you, I'm a new person. Everybody don't even know what to do. I don't even know if to keep this hair or another hair. I, I tell you, the, when the Lord say something, I just I take it off and put on something else. Listen, I don't even know now. I'm going by the Holy Spirit is guiding me. I yeah. said, he said, you can do it. When I got home, I, I need to tell this testimony. Lord have mercy. When I got home a week later, I said, Lord, I said, I need, I need to know the direction. I need to know. I said, I need the funds to do what I need. Why? Lord have mercy, Jesus. My aunt passed away at 97 years old and left me inherited. I looked in my bank account. I had $50,000. I get, I spent all that I had to get to the camp meeting. And he said he will not have his children begging for bread. I made sure all my bills was paid. But when I looked in that account, I couldn't believe it. I called the bank. I said, is there a mistake? They said, no, ma'am, this is an inheritance that came from North Carolina. I said, is that the truth? Is it $50,000, y'all? I, I, I still got it. I ain't touched it yet because I did it. <laughs> I said, I said, that matches my salary. Lord have mercy. I, I said, Lord, what is it? What is it? He said, don't, don't worry about it. I'll give you a sign later on. I'm grateful for the change that took place in a, when I went to that camp meeting because I'll never ever be the same. I'm ready to run on, I'm ready to run on. I tell you that baptism was, a, was the best thing that I did in my life and I'm 64 years old and I'm so grateful. Wow. I'm so grateful to be a part of this, wow. this movement even yes. now. Thank yes. So oh my God. Oh, Dr. Noreen, my God. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Hallelujah. Thea, she, okay, she must have went. She, she probably on a call. Crystal was there. Hey, Catrice, good morning. God bless you. Oh my God, the miracles that happen. Uh, let me see. Uh, Ingla, give me a little, just a little update. Noreen Davis, that thing has blessed me. I'm telling you, being connected to the right source will change your life. Being connected to the right source will change your whole life. Lania been with me for almost 35 plus years. Lania, I'm telling you, being connected. Y'all don't want to miss this next camp meeting. Start preparing now. Get your tickets to camp meeting. You fly from wherever you are to Tampa, St. Petersburg. You don't want to miss this. You don't have to register to buy your ticket. The link will go live tonight and you can register. $99 is going to be the same price. Praise God. And these tents, I um, spoke to our people the other day. I said, the one tent that I'm going to add this time is going to be helps and administration because I believe that the helps ministry gifts need support and need, God, I feel your presence. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. Oh, glory. 
glory to God. Hey, Kana Namashi. Oh my gosh. Glory. Oh, glory, glory, glory. My God, his presence is so real right now. Hallelujah. Be, be strengthened. My God, my God, I thank you. And so we want to support helps at administrations. Uh, we're just excited. We may even do something with music and arts. But uh, this camp meeting, it, it will, it, the pattern has been set, but each camp meeting has its specifics that we want to add. So don't miss this. I'm telling you, you know, um, borrow the money if you have to, <laughs> you know, but don't let money be an obstacle for you in not moving in this next move. Angela, give us a little update of what you saw. And then Crystal and Catrice was there. Praise God. I still got Catrice in my office. <laughs> Ingla, what did you see? Oh, my God. You was up close. My God. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> you know, I always say every experience is some sort of personal revival and renewal and refreshing. And um, there was another word you gave me, Bishop. And I cannot, they won't come to me right now. Okay. But. Um, Reformation. Yes, ma'am. That's it. Yes. Yes. And, um, you know, I, I like words. So that reformation, a, a reformation, um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm getting, no, I'm not getting, I'm unstuck. So that's a, that's a great thing. And I think one of the things that struck, struck me the most, and because I, I kind of pay attention to things, how well everybody was able to work together when yeah. things were going on. And the Go Talent leadership team is just phenomenal. I mean, <laughs> there really aren't words, but everything just flowed and everything was just, you know, it, it, was, it wasn't stressful, even though we were busy and we were doing a lot, we were just able to do and able to flow and able to move and to see people and um, to see um, Barbara and Steve Etheridge come back home was just a blessing to me uh, because, you know, I know them from Jericho. So that was phenomenal too. And, and the connections, and you're absolutely right, being connected in the right place is phenomenal yes. because some of us have flailed uh, yeah. trying to find the place and it's just it's 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 great and if you did not make summer camp meeting please don't miss winter camp meeting yes it's an almost indescribable experience actually it's a whole experience and it's hard to put words to it sometimes but it's phenomenal mm -hmm. yeah it was amazing. It was amazing. Crystal, I know you were there. And uh, Thea, come on in. You back? Let me grab you while I got you. <laughs> yes, I know, uh, I know summertime. I'm multitasking. I am, and I apologize. And no, no, it's all good, baby. It's all good. We are adult learners. We have a life. <laughs> yes. Well, I was so glad that um, I was able to come to the summer camp meeting because, like, um, Dr. Skillman said, I too grew up Baptist and um, you have to get, I, I've learned um, through the things I've suffered um, that you have to get um, what you need from other places. And I found that at camp meeting. Um, I had never been exposed to um, the level of prophecy. Um, I too was thinking I was being nosy going to the prophet's tent um, but, um, Ray Shipman past apostle now Ray Shipman, um, God used him in a mighty way to answer some of the questions that I personally had had. And that's why I came to camp meeting. I had all these question marks about, you know, the dreams I've been having and, um, not understand, well, not truly understanding how to tap into that, um, and um, he gave me, um, he and Bishop um, Herbert Jackson um, gave me um, the answers that I was seeking and, and also spoke into my life 
um, and, and affirmed uh, a lot of things that I knew, but uh, were hesitant um, to, and to even walk into and admit, but it was phenomenal. I was, I was sad that I had to leave early for um, um, a business, um, uh, biz for business, but um, I was glad that I was there for most of it. And it was just powerful. The healing tent, um, I was healed from uh, pain that I haven't had since. Um, and I, Ingla was there um, to witness that. I was glad to meet Ingla um, and some of you there as well. But, and, and to um, act, actually echo what you were saying about the networks and the connections that I've made since. Um, it has been just remarkable and um, something that is just priceless to me. Um, I, I'm just so excited to be connected to Bishop Vaughn and to this movement. Um, and I wouldn't trade it for anything. Um, I am praying for my, where I worship and um, to be used um, in the areas that I believe God has called me. So that's my experience. There's, well, there were so many other things um, that was birthed from that, um, from just even the oil that was on me that's pouring on to others in my own life and my family as a result, um, how they are now in tune with the Holy Spirit and um, the language has changed in our household. Um, and that yeah, that's priceless. Yeah, yeah. I watched you uh, during camp meeting. I, I love when I see observers, um, the, um, the, left, the left branded ones <laughs> who observe and internalize deeply. And um, I watched um, how Holy Spirit was just ministering to you. And I kind of kept my eyes on the tribe. I, you know, I will be, I will say that I was a little partial <laughs> and a little prejudicial. Uh, I did keep my eyes on you all specifically because I didn't want anybody to miss it. And you all are such an intricate part of this next move. You're such an intricate part uh, Ingla continues to say to me, the movement, um, and I, I keep, she keeps saying it to me. And every time she says it, I, I try not to tear up uh, because who, who, who would know, you know, just who would know. Uh, but God is doing so many things uh, in this. And you, ladies, you know, uh, when the Lord gave me this, um, those preaching women, uh, years back, years, 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 years back. Um, and I've trained hundreds of women in ministry. But when he revisited me about it, uh, I was in Ghana. Now this is 2005, 2006. And he said, I want you to raise it back up. And he gave me this vision of these gazelles. And these gazelles were just leaping and leaping and leaping. <clears throat> and on the sides, on the sides and around the back, there were men that were, kind of guarding us. And someone posted this visual the other day, I think it was Suzette um, Spence that posted it and it just brought tears back because it was so real. I just saw thousands of women just leaping, just leaping and, and just moving to moving the, the church towards uh, God's perfect will, moving the church. Uh, and certainly those that, of us who have been last shall be first. That's his promise, and he's doing it. I'm watching him do it. I'm watching the Lord do this, and he promised me that I would see it. He promised, and so every time I see it, whether it's in the secular world, marketplace, whether it's in academia, whether it's in the ministry, I you will always see me celebrated because he promised me. So I was I was watching, and the the crowds were enormous. Uh, we we reached our maximum. <laughs> the police came and said, uh, you can't get another person. <laughs> I said, okay. And it was so crazy the way it happened, but I'm telling you, our obedience, our obedience is amazing. Catrice was there and she had her paintings. I had to beg her to put them on the table, big head girl. <laughs> what did you see? Give me one thing that you saw at camp meeting. 
Um, I'll start from the, the end of it was communion. Yes. Communion. When we took communion together as a family and just that touched me because I realized that I'm a, lot, a part of the larger body of Christ. Um, just seeing other young people, connecting with other young people there, um, seeing that my gift has made room for me and just receiving instruction, even more instruction on my place in the body. And God just did so much. And then when I came home, I went to the healing tent, came home. God told me on my way home that my father would be healed, went over there. He told me exactly how it was going to be done. And I, I was like, well, if I saw it at camp meeting, my faith, I know that's what's going to happen here. And it happened. His leg, I watched it grow. I watched it grow. I watched the <laughs> healing happen. <laughs> I was like, oh, it's on. So, and then just seeing what's been happening in my church and how God is just, you talk about being like little nucleuses of the Holy Spirit and how when we continue to explode and how it's just stretching out and people are noticing and he's sending just young people from like all over. So I just, I'm blessed and I love you, Bishop. I love you all. It was good to meet everybody too. (laughs) Oh my God, amazing. Can I add something? I forgot the play was phenomenal too. The first night, the first night, the play was like, wow. It was well put together. I was like, okay, so this is going on the road. (laughs) <laughs> uh, because some people are very they're visual learners about you know holy spirit it was so um true to form in a lot of ways even though there was some satire in there but it was so true to form with um how the church is and how you know resistant um at least my, you know and what my experience has been to the move of the holy spirit for whatever reason so i wanted to add that sorry Wow, no, that's a great, <laughs> hallelujah. And I encourage you ladies to, with, with just coming to camp meeting, as Bishop is saying that, please be obedient. If Holy Spirit is leading you to come, come. Because I know that when we had the summer camp meeting, that I thought I heard the Lord say, I couldn't come. And so I was like, okay, I I can't go. That's okay. But then he spoke more and he said, you can't go alone. And so I had to call my friends, my family. I had to call everybody and get them to come with me. Like, come on, you got to come to camp meeting. And some people had never heard of Bishop. They were like, okay, if if, if you say it's going to be good, then I'm going to trust you. It's going to be good. And they came and they just were blessed. Lives were transformed. I mean, just deliverance and healing broken from past hurts and pains. And just out of one act of obedience, the ask, everybody that I asked did not come, but the people that came were ordained by God to be there and the Lord provided. It was actually a breaking of the the money stronghold for me because Holy Spirit was like, whatever they give you before the camp meeting, you take. But if they don't give you anything after they leave this camp meeting, their debt is clear. Don't take any money from them. And so he broke that he broke that money stronghold off of me because I would have been like a, a little, you know, a little mafia. Like, oh, you owe me money from the camp meeting. But he was like, you're not going to do that. And it was it was tremendous. So you will be blessed. You wow. will be blessed. Wow. Wow. Thank you. And you were there. My God. Oh, my God. So uh, for the rest of us uh, that are preparing for winter camp meeting, I put the dates in there. The link will go live tonight. The registration is going to be very, very, um, very, very easy and simple. It's $99 for all days. Uh, But uh, uh, Thea just reminded me uh, of the play. And so I'm reaching out to Lydia right right now. (laughs) I totally forgot. And uh, I am um, saying to her to get get the road crew ready. And uh, be at the winter camp. I think because it it set such a tone and it set such a precedent for what it is that came afterwards. And the struggle, the struggle is still very real. Um, 
Uh, amen. So, amen. God bless each of you. So, Father, we thank you today for this moment in time. It's amazing what you are doing, and it's amazing. Uh, great uh, is the Lord's word, and great is the company of women who published it. And we thank you for these publishers. We thank you for these announcers, these clarion trumpets uh, that will continue God, as you have gifted them and graced them to continue to publish your word, uh, wherever it is that you put their feet, wherever it is that you attach their voice, that they are a company, a great company of women who will publish the Lord's word. And for this, we are grateful. Speak to us, speak through us. Speak, God, and only you can. And we thank you that we will be strengthened and encouraged. We will be enabled and engaged to publish your word. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I give a shout out to Bishop, to, yes. to our fellow sister, Zama Boom, because she could not come. Oh, wow. But she paid for somebody Vincent, she paid for him lock, stock, and barrel from, wow. from his, his, his flight, his hotel, his food, his camp meeting calls, because she wanted to be there. And so he was standing in proxy for her. Wow. And so if women, if you cannot be there, you sow seed into someone else's life and they can stand in proxy for you and those blessings that are flowing in them and through them will resonate to you. And I, amen. Yes, 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 yes. I'm telling you, get everybody you know, men, women, boys, and girls, your pastors, if they are males, invite them to winter camp meeting. It's not a women's camp meeting. It is a camp meeting. Invite your young people. Bring your, your youth. Amen. We had a tent for millennials. We had a tent for teens. And our, our children's uh, team was amazing. There were 27 children baptized in the Holy Spirit during camp meeting, 27 children. The prophetic song went forth, music happened. And as a young man was birthing out the song, the Lord had me to lay hands on him and he fell to the ground and began to speak in tongues for the first time in his life. And that was somebody's grandchild, somebody who sent their grandchild with the grandmother. The mother couldn't come, but the grandmother brought her grandchildren. And these little young women and young boys are still prophesying and laying hands on the sick. Can you imagine what this next generation is going to look like because of Pentecost, because of this? It's just amazing to me to watch what God is doing. So even as we, uh, I posted this, uh, let me see if I can grab it. Let me see if I'm smart enough to do this. Oh, Jesus. Help me, Lord Jesus. Let me shake it out of my Okay, Pastor Juan, I see you, precious. Thank you so much. Let's see if I can do this. I'm learning this, all of these uh, technological thing, thingies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's see. Uh, so I posted something in the chat. See if you all can see that. And I want to talk, I want to chase that question. What does oil and wine have in common? What does, <laughs> what does oil and wine have in common? And um, I want you to just kind of think about that. What does oil and wine have in common? <clears throat> what does oil and wine? And I don't want you to shout it out yet. I just want you to kind of Think about it uh, for just a moment. What does oil and wine have in common? <clears throat> and a few days ago, um, I, 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 I saw this uh, meme and I posted it. Let's see if I can 
uh, get it up here and share it. Many of you saw it as well and you all responded to it. And um, let's see. I think I'm going to be able to do it. Yes. Praise God. I am getting good. Lord have mercy. I can get a job. Praise God. Okay, let's see here if I can actually get it up. Okay. And so let's see. There we go. I'm doing good. Oh my God, this is so freaking wonderful. You better go ahead, Bishop. You better go ahead. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. <clears throat> so we saw this, and, and many of us saw it in the, I put it on our page. Your calling is going to crush you. So if you are called to mend the brokenhearted, you will wrestle with brokenheartedness. If you are called to prophesy, you're going to struggle to control your mouth. If you're called to lay hands, you're going to struggle with spiritual viruses. If you are called to preach and teach the gospel, you will be sifted for the wisdom that anoints your message. If you are called to empower, your self-esteem will be attacked. Your successes will be hard fought. Your calling comes with cups. And I believe that's supposed to be cuts, but I think there are also cups, cups of sorrow, cups of agony, thorns, and sifting that are necessary for your mantle to be authentic humble and powerful. Your crushing won't be easy because your assignment is not easy. Your oil is not cheap. Wow. So let's let's just kind of walk around this for a minute. I kind of wanted to go in a little bit of a different direction. We've been talking about our gifts. And we're going to get back to that as we proceed after this month. But I wanted to just kind of, kind of circle around this, um, and kind of like in my in my spirit, I saw like if y'all remember those old cowboy meetings when the wagon trains would stop from their journey and just kind of circle around the fire. And so I want you to pull your wagons up this morning. I want you to pull your wagons around this. And all that we are and all that we uh, want to be and all that God has told us that we shall be. I want this to be pivotal for us today. I want to talk about this. Your calling is going to crush you. And I want to talk to us and I want us to talk to each other because I think that what happens, I know what happens, not think, is that our crushing makes us bitter. Our crushing makes us angry. Our crushing uh, makes us volatile. Our crushing sometimes causes us to um, not heal well and not be whole. And so I want to help us to articulate better what is happening and to respond better, to have better responses. Most of uh, the people that I minister to in ministry, and I wanna move this to women in particular, um, have not always interpreted their crushings well. And I don't know if the, uh, that is just indigenous to women, but I know women because of what it is that we feel and what it is that we uh, 
do with our feelings, depending upon who was in your ear, depending upon how they helped you to transcribe and translate uh, what was occurring in your journey, in your life, depends on how healthy you will be. So I asked the question, what does oil and wine have in common? And I'm going to give you the answer. They both came from Prussia. They both came from Prussia. So olive oil, soybean oil, corn oil, canola oil, whatever brand of oil that you want to talk about. There cannot be oil except there is crushing of some vegetable or some, some item that has the oil contained in it. Now, I love olives. I actually absolutely love the green olives and the salt and all of that. And I'm learning to like um, black olives. And, you know, every now and again, I can deal with it. Uh, but I like olives. But the olive, the essence of the olive and the value proposition of the olive is not the olive. The value proposition of an olive is its oil. Right now, most of you may or may not agree, but I love wine. I absolutely grew up on homemade wine, and my mom uh, would go uh, at certain times of the year and she would get the fruit, and um, the trains would come and she would go buy crates and crates of these big grapes and she would wash them and wash them and then she would put them in our cast iron sink in the basement and then she would proceed <laughs> to crush them and made us do it <laughs> made me do it i don't know what happened with my other sisters and mothers they got away with murder but we had to crush and 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 crush. They should pour all the sugar on top of it. And then we would crush and crush and crush and crush. And when we went through all of the seeds, the, the sifting and the cheesecloths and all, all, all of that, all of that, all of that, all of that, until the actual grape broke down. It had to break down all the way. I mean, it had to break all the way down. And as much as we would be, I would be sneaking the grapes, it didn't compare to the value of the wine. And every Thanksgiving, my mother had an oat keg in the back and um, she kept it in the dark and she covered it up. And every Thanksgiving, she would bring out her best wine. And it was a treat. And, we didn't know it was sin and wrong and all that. The kids had wine. We all had wine. Everybody had wine. It wasn't a big religious conversation because mommy made it. And some of the grapes, she would make jam. Some of the grapes, she would make jelly. But all of it required a very similar process. And that was that it had to be crushed. Now, when she made preserves, we didn't have to crush it as much because you wanted some of the fruit to be whole, pick peach preserves, pear preserves, all of those, y'all don't know nothing about that. Mama would can and do all of that, but the wine. So when I look at this text in Luke 10, I think we all are very familiar with that text where the um, Luke talks about how this Samaritan helped uh, this person who had been lying in the ground beaten and left for dead. I think we're all knowledgeable of this text, but I want us to just kind of look at this because I think that that's one of the most powerful, to me, one of the most powerful scriptures that I have ever, ever read 
ever. And I go back over it often. And as I was preparing for us today, I thought about what that text and this mean having cop. So uh, my Bible calls it the parable of the Good Samaritan. But um, as you look down, verse 33, a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. And he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And then he put the man on his own donkey, took him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day he took out two silver coins and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expense that you may have. And I look at that text and I said, wow, and we probably all have preached it or heard it preached before. And we talk about the Samaritan and we talk about the priest and we talk about the Levite and how they pass by the man. We may even pull verse number 30 to look at the condition. Um, they stripped him and beat him, went away and left him half dead. There's, there's much to preach about. But I always look at verse 34. And I want us to kind of look at that and talk about this. He went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. And the question, what do those two things have in common? What do those two things have in common? Now, your value proposition is what you will give to the world. That's your value proposition. That is what you offer the world. What is your value proposition? Now, here's the thing I want us to understand is, as gospel women, whatever our giftings are, whatever our temperaments are, whatever it is, our gift um, certainly will make room for us. But when you get in that room, you still need to offer something of value. Your gift looks good on us. Our gift looks good on us. We look good in our gift. But what is your real value proposition? And for many women of the gospel, because you have not processed crushing well, your oil or and wine is not rich or absent altogether because you did not process the crushing well. So the enemy kind of plays with our minds and says to us, they don't like you, they're against you, they're this, they're that, you know, all of those, all of those things that we all hear in our mine and in our mini me and you know we all we all hear it right or you know the enemy will point out um a parent or a leader or an event that we just feel was just oh, how could that happen to me oh, you know this is oh you know just i mean just you know how we how we gather <laughs> We like we like we gotta gather uh, events that just were so wrong, you know, just did us wrong. Or sometimes it's in our family, sibling rivalry. My mama liked my my sister better, or <clears throat> it could be real life violation or trauma, various things. But we, I don't think we process it well unless you had someone in your ear to help you to understand that this was a part of your oil. This was a part of the wine. This was a part, this is necessary for you to offer a worth or a value to your generation. Now, you know, not everybody knows how to explain that because so many others are wounded and damaged 
and they carry this bitter wine. My mother would make sweet wine. I don't like bitter wine. Uh, or uh, putrid oil, oil uh, that is not sweet smelling or that is has gone bad. And that is because it was mixed with bitterness, bitter herbs. That top line caught my attention when I first saw this. Your calling is going to crush you. That, that's, that's big all by itself. My calling is going to crush me. One of the popular songs about 10 years ago that we all probably have heard and love is C.C. Winans' rendition of The Alabaster Box, right? So I always think of that when I think of this same text. <clears throat> and um, let's just kind of run back to Luke chapter 7. I love Luke. Luke is my favorite gospel. <laughs> I love the position. But I love this <clears throat> because in verse 36, uh, verse 37, of course, you know the pericope here that Jesus is at the Pharisee's house having dinner. And when a woman, verse 37, who had lived a sinful life in that town learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house, she brought an alabaster box. Let me read that again. She brought an alabaster jar of perfume. Of course, one translation says oil. And as she stood there behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. And then she wiped them with her hair and kissed them and poured the oil or the perfume on it. <clears throat> now, when, when, you, when you look at that text, I do. Maybe everybody doesn't, but I do. I wonder how much it cost her. What did that event cost her? You know, we, we, we're very ca casual with texts. I don't think we dig deep enough, you know, when we're teaching and preaching. Um, what did that cost her to walk through that door at a Pharisee's house? Uh, not just some other guy, but a Pharisee's house full of men. Full of men that possibly she even might have, have with her, with her own lifestyle her own reputation, you know, very possible that everybody in there knew what she did. Simon knew. And Simon said, if, if he knew what kind of woman she was, so I, maybe he had had her, maybe he had been with her. You know, I, I take liberty with the text. <laughs> and I tell people, I'm gonna take liberty with this because how would he know? You know, so, very possibly some of the other Pharisees in that room had been with her because she made her living doing this. One text says it was a whole year's wages. You know, and so what did it cost her to go in that room? What did it cost her to, to you know, even have the audacity to go uninvited in a man's house I'm sure she had done it before, but she probably was invited. But what did it cost her to, to go in there? It crushed her. I'm sure it crushed her. It crushed her to hear what Simon was saying. It crushed her to know that she wasn't invited. It crushed her to know that, you know, these guys probably, you know, had been with her or at least had friends that had been with her. It crushed her. But it didn't matter. She had the oil. She had the value proposition that Jesus needed. And the Bible says that the fragrance of it filled the whole room. You know, some people say this is the same Mary that anointed Jesus after Lazarus rose. And some people say this is not the same Mary. 
but the texts are very parallel, very similar. What did it cost her? It cost her everything. We preach the text, you know, you don't know the price of my oil, but we don't really dig into this woman's life and what it cost her. This was her calling. You know, this was her moment. And we don't, we don't do well sometimes when it comes to our crushing. We shy back or we, um, we engage it, but we don't come out of it healthy. We don't come out of it well. We don't come out of it with a good report. And some of us still may have a little bit of hints about that event or those events and who we think caused those events and who we think are responsible for those events. Not realizing that it's the calling that's crushing you. That it's not the people that you identify. It's not the, you know, it's, you ran that DNA, you know who did it, but it wasn't them. It was the calling. So I want us to, I, I want us to kind of have some, some conversation around this today. And, you know, what does all and why, <clears throat> have in common and what is your value proposition because it's going to cost us and I think we we say that but we don't when it starts <laughs> when we got to get to the to the checkout line and pay we don't like the pay <laughs> what are you willing to pay for your oil? What are you willing to pay? What are you willing to pay? <laughs> and what, and maybe I should say, how have you interpreted your crushing? Are you interpreting it like it's warfare? You know, the devil, you know, the, the enemy, the, 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 they, they shouldn't have did me like that. And, you know, and uh, they just always, you know, coming against women. They just always, you know, cause I'm young, or, you know, cause I'm old. Or, you know, my mama didn't understand my daddy. You know, how are you interpreting this? What, what, you know, what demeanor <laughs> do you have when you're talking about your crushing? You still got a bad attitude? You know, you still kind of whatever, <laughs> you know, I'm, well, they ain't gonna stop me. I'm gonna preach no matter what. Is that, is that, that how your oil, your oil smells? Huh, huh, I don't care. What? Yeah, huh? You know, uh -uh. Uh, you know, I done ran into so many folks, Lord Jesus. And, you know, or they're, or they're bruised. And still hurting. Not healed. Not well. Kind of, that, that the trauma has lock them into a, a particular emotional, mental space that they cannot get out of. And their responses and their reactions are not, you know, healthy. I like that. Tawana says, does your oil smell like shame? I love that. What does my oil smell like? What does my wine taste like? Can someone else live if I give them a drink of my wine? Will they be better or worse? 
If I use my oil, will they heal or will they die? Because there are flies in my apothecary. There are flies in my ointment. What does my oil smell like? And what does my wine taste like? And if I'm going to be sent to a generation that is bleeding and dying and left for dead, okay? So I might be the only one that stops. The Levite didn't stop. Come on, the, the, the priest didn't stop, but I stopped. But my value proposition doesn't make the situation better. It makes it worse because I'm not healed. I'm mad. I'm not healthy. I'm not in a good place. My crushing has almost killed me and I'm not well enough to offer my oil to anybody or give a drink of my wine to anybody because it will make them worse. Okay, nobody's saying nothing. <laughs> really? And this is what, you know, I, I want us, we complain about it. We fuss about it. We tell anybody that will listen about it. How did this Samaritan, let's dig into the text, get that oil? How did that Samaritan get that wine? So if you know that there is history, and I think Luke is very specific here in terms of this parable, in terms of why it was a Samaritan. It wasn't the Levite who was already accepted, who was already had access to the temple, who already could eat from the table of showbread, could already, you know, go past the, the menorah or could, could, you know, could bring an offering and a sacrifice. It wasn't the Levite. It wasn't the Levite who already legally could carry the ark or carry the glory. It wasn't the Levite. It wasn't the priest who, who, who also had certain privileges, certain access, certain rights. It wasn't either one of the bougies who within that dynamic, within that context, had all these privileges and rights. And, and, but notice what they didn't have. They didn't have oil. And they didn't have wine. They didn't stop because they were mean or they didn't stop because they were arrogant. They didn't stop because they didn't have a value proposition that would have helped the situation. Because neither of them was crushed. Neither one of them had ever had to go through nothing. They had access. They had rights. They had privileges. They could worship. They could do all of it, but pay attention to the fact that the Samaritan who had no privileges, no access, no rights, who was eliminated from the temple worship, who was crushed because of race, class, and gender, that was already going through their own emotional, come on now, social, cultural, ethnic, gender biases. No access, no rights, no privileges. Couldn't go to the temple, couldn't worship, couldn't bring a sacrifice, couldn't do anything. But because of that, had what that situation needed. But it cost him some of everything to do that. It cost him some of everything. It cost him everything. And even going down that dark road had to pay a price. But notice, not only did he have the oil, the wine, he had the donkey, he had coins, he had 
access. He had favor because when you have gone through something, you've learned how to survive. You've learned how to make it work. You've learned how to connect the dots. You've had to meet people. You've had to engage people because you didn't have a silver spoon. Whereas the priest and the Levite, all they had to do was be the priest and the Levite. But the Samaritan had to engage others, had to bring others into, had to trust others. Uh-oh. <laughs> had to befriend others because there was no privileges, no rights. But he had the oil and the wine for that situation. He had the relationship with the innkeeper. He had coins. He had transportation. Because sometimes because you haven't been crushed, you're, you don't have what you really think you have because you ain't never had to engage. You never had to suffer. You never had to be friend. You never had to, had to go outside of your comfort zone because everything you needed was self-contained. But when you are ostracized and marginalized, when you have systems that are against you, you gotta make it work. Y'all not, y'all. <laughs> So this guy knew, look, I can't go nowhere without the oil and wine because I might get killed. I might get raped. I might get violated. I already know that this is a Jericho road. I already know that thieves and robbers are up and down here, but I'm not afraid of them. And should peradventure somebody else gets in trouble, I will share what I have because I got to have oil. I got to have wine. Why? Because I got to eat. Ain't nobody going to feed me because I'm a Samaritan. I got to drink because ain't nobody going to give me nothing to drink because I'm a Samaritan. So if I got a little piece of meal or flour in my bag on the side, on the side of my mule, I can make a little oil cake and I can drink a little glass of wine and I'll be all right because ain't nobody going to give me nothing. <laughs> I gotta, I gotta do this. And I think some, some of us are just spoiled rotten. We don't wanna go through nothing. We want somebody to lay hands on us and give us an opportunity and put us on a stage and give us a microphone. And you know, cause I'm a girl, you ought to just, you know, get over it. <laughs> but you ain't made no friends. You're, you're not nice. You don't, you don't know how to hustle. You don't know how to, engage you, you don't know how to talk to people you don't know how to move you just want somebody to give you a free pass no no it's not that's not how this works and then some of you are just just rotten you just spoiled and this happened to me and this happened to me girl if i sat you down and told you all oh, that didn't happen to me it would take us at least a month and that's me talking non-stop God forbid if I have to stop and take a nap. I, 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 think, I, I think that sometimes because we are women, we think we're privileged. And we think people just ought to do what they got to do because after all, I'm a woman of God. No, that's not how this works. That's not how this works. What are you willing to pay for this? And how is your attitude? How is your demeanor? How are you interpreting this? And it's gonna hit in your family. It's gonna hit in your church. It's gonna hit in your denomination. You're gonna be crushed from all sides. That's what Paul says. We are crushed on every side. It ain't just going to be crushed at home or crushed at school or crushed in the seminary or crushed in the job or crushed at, no, you're going to be crushed on all sides until that grape no longer exists in that present state. And listen, mama was served that wine and wasn't no grapes in there screaming. Hey, huh, I don't believe what y'all did to me. Hey, I, I ain't heard the great talk yet. 
The grape was glad to give of its life, of its essence. The olive is glad to give of its essence. And we just throw olive all around, but how many olives does it take to make one little bottle of oil? Because it's valuable. And people risk their lives picking them olives. Up and down the mountains, up and down. They, they, it ain't like they just walk up and, you know, they just, no. No, babies. And sometimes it's the way we interpret stuff is just so not healthy. We don't interpret well. We're not interpreting our crushings well. And I'm saying this to all of us. We're not interpreting our crushings well. We agonize too long. We grieve too long. We hurt too long. We fuss too long. It, we're not. We're not doing that well. All right, who am I talking to? Let's see. Let's see, who am I talking to? <laughs> somebody said, well, you just can't, uh, you can't put a, a, a value on somebody's grief or you don't know how long, yes, I can. And every time in scripture, when someone died, God gave them how long they could grieve. Some, he told them you can grieve 30 days, that's it. Some he said, okay, 90 days. And some he said, don't grieve at all. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> we grieve too long. Then you got to go to grief counseling. And then, you know, and here we go with our foolishness. But you know, baby, you just don't know how long grief, you know, grief has a cycle. Where y'all get that stupid stuff from? Where did y'all learn that? We are preachers. We're, what are you talking about? Where did that come from? I understand the psychologists. I know y'all clinical people that's on here and I love y'all, but that ain't the Bible. We grieve too long. We hurt too hard. We cry too hard, too easy. What is, come on, talk back. Y'all know I'm telling you the truth. And we complain way too much. Amen. We're still talking about stuff that happened to us and we were three. Really? We still talking about, well, you know, my husband died. How long ago, babe? 20 years. 20 years? You should have had three men by now. What you talking about? <laughs> Child, don't let, look what? Uh-uh, no play. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got divorced. How long you been divorced, baby? Five years. You ain't been on, out on a date in five years. What? You don't see nothing wrong with that? Mm. Shit, I got my divorce and within two weeks, I was out on a date, which it, it might not even been two weeks. It might have been the same week. I don't know. Because I'm not going to grieve that. I, I, look, hey, I suffered in it. I'm not going to suffer out of it. I know that's right. I had suffered in it. I'm not going to suffer out of it. <laughs> All right. I'm a, if I'm gonna suffer out of it, I'm supposed to stay in it and suffer. That's no, true. Son. First, first, first man to ask me, I said, "Come on, girl, let me take you out." Show, sure, let's go, girl. I got so fine and sweet and smelled up that room so tough. What I was, what? <laughs> Y'all, we grieve too long, we hurt too easy, we cry too fast, we grumble. Come on, I'm just talking about how we process crushing. And we give ourselves permission, not understanding that our value proposition is declining. There is no value in all of that. The value is in the crushing. The value is in what it produces. It's not in you always testifying about it and always complaining about it and always got to tell somebody about it. No, get crushed and hurry up. Ooh, that was a good word. That was a good word. I felt that in my shout and on and on. Go on and get crushed and shut up. And let's go. Amen. Because somebody is bleeding and dying, waiting on your oil, not your complaining. They don't want you. Come on now. 
No, they don't overcome by your testimony. You do. You overcome by the word of your testimony. But they don't. They need that oil. They need that wine. Okay. Y'all quiet. <laughs> Since the England, you got your hand up. Come on. Tawana got her hand up. I'm coming to you. Let's go. Yes, ma'am. Come on. And I think you and I have had a discussion similar about, um, and it goes back to how you process and the crushing and being taught to kind of revel in that and hang in that forever and ever and ever and not what to do with it. You know, there's all this glory and I went through this, I went through this, I went through this and that's how we define value. And I remember Pentecost when I was saying that, you know, I didn't live in that space anymore. And you said, well, how did you find the switch? And I said, I didn't find the switch, I cut the wires. Yeah, because get turning off the switch because there are people who revel in your being broken as well. They need wow. you to stay there. And wow. so when turning off the switch, if they know where it is, they can flip it back on. Wow. And we allow that. So if I cut the wires, you can flip the switch all day long. The light is not working. Wow. The not working. That's good. And so I had to, that's what I had to learn. That, okay, when you continually bring this thing up, I'm letting, I'm, I'm allowing myself to go back there over and over and over again. So, so you can pat me on my head and make me feel like, well, you know, baby, it's okay. It's okay. But then when I said, okay, you know what? And I have literally said this, I'm, we're not going to have that conversation anymore. Amen. I'm done. I don't live there anymore. Yes. I have said, okay, that was six months ago. Why are you talking to me about that? Yes, I was upset in that moment. I was hurt in that moment. I was broken in that moment, but it's done. And I'm all right now. So why are you mentioning that to me? I had someone actually call me, you know, Nana passed on June 1st, 2020. I had someone call me May 31st. And at first I couldn't figure out why they were calling me, but they kept saying, are you all right? Are you doing okay? I've been thinking about you. What's wrong? Are you all right? now? I guess she, I don't know if you would tell me if anything was wrong. Um, I guess you would, you tell somebody, I said, if there was something wrong, I would tell somebody, but there's not, I'm fine. And I was like, Holy Spirit, what was that even about? Cause it was a bizarre phone call. Somebody I hadn't even talked to in a long time. And he said, they know what, what tomorrow is, but I'm okay. I'm not, you know, do I miss her? Yes, of course. But I'm not, I don't, I don't live there. Yeah. You know, and I wasn't going to, and, and I wasn't going to allow myself to be pulled back into that grief and pulled back into that. So I, that's, I've, I've learned that lesson. And that has been extremely important because I was just wallowing in whatever. Oh, God. And you know that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and what is the the aroma of that kind of oil? That was foul. Mm -hmm. It's foul, and it doesn't have the right consistency. Mm -hmm. There's stuff in it, mm -hmm. just like if you have, um, you know, a, a giant bottle, a big bottle, big bottle of olive oil. I put into smaller containers. Because if I keep touching that big bottle with dirty hands and all that and stuff is around the rim and, and it contaminates it. I mean, in a literal physical sense. Absolutely. So the same thing happens spiritually. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's good. And the container that I put this oil into, I don't ever have to touch the rim. I put it in a pump container. Yeah. Yeah. So it just flows into my hand. I don't have to touch, I don't have to touch the rim. Ne that's, the rim is never going to get contaminated. Yeah, yeah. And you're more likely to use it. Exactly. You're more likely to use it because you can handle it much easier. Right. Yeah, wow, wow. That's so, so, so good. We grieve too long. We stay mad too long. We hurt too bad. We, you know, and so my, I, my question is, so what is your value proposition? Come on, Pastor Tawana, let's go. What you thinking?
Hi, Bishop. Uh, hey. Greetings, everyone. Um, I'll, I'm thoroughly messed up right now. Okay. I'm messed <laughs> up. Um, you know, I wasn't um, even going to come on this morning um, because I had missed so many weeks of Tribe Vibe, you know, so many months. And I wasn't able to make it to, I'm just talking about me. So I apologize if I'm bleeding on y'all at the moment. No, 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 it's fine. Um, I wasn't able to make it to um, Pentecost, to Detroit for Pentecost. And I wasn't able to make it for camp meeting. Um, and this morning I thought, let me go ahead and get on here. Mm. I said, but I haven't been reading the books. I didn't get the books. I didn't, I fell off. And uh, I would say this is a season of crushing. Yeah. And, um, you know, not interpreting our crushing well for me also means that we experience our crushing with an element of shame. And that uh, it really spoke to me when you said uh, about how your mother would make the wine in the dark and put it under cover, mm -hmm. that the pressing is hidden and that the crushing is hidden in a way. And uh, so I joined on today and you're speaking right to where I am. Praise God. This isn't the first season like this. And I doubt it will be my last. But this is real. This is, this is where, this is where my efficacy is being produced. This yeah. is where my effectiveness yes. is being produced. And it's so hard. And now that I'm me thinking about the woman with the alabaster box, and I love that text, and I love that song, and I sing that song. But today I'm thinking about the courage yeah. that it took. Wow. For her to go around people that know things about her, mm -hmm. that could smell the smoke on her, that mm -hmm. could smell the stench on her of where she'd been, could smell the other men that she had been with, but she knew that what she had was precious. And she mm -hmm. knew that, that she had a, a work to do. Yes. And so I'm sitting with that and I'm just, I'm so encouraged by, by this time. I'm so encouraged. I'm so encouraged by the pressing and the crushing yes. uh, that is necessary. And um, I'm a mess. <laughs> I'm a sure enough mess right now. Um, because crushing and pressing comes from all angles. It comes, it comes, it comes in your family. It comes in your marriage. That's right. It comes on your career. Yep. Yeah. And yeah. you don't experience this type of crushing. This this type of crushing is likely to take you out. Yes. Yes. If you allow it. Yes. You are absolutely right. That's how uh, intense that it is. You feel like you're going to die. And believe it or not, you will. <laughs> you will. Thanks you for will. allowing me to share. Yeah, you will, you will. And our, our death, the dying out to self, the dying out to our own will, whims, and all of our, whatever it is, is what produces your efficacy, honey. And sometimes I think we are afraid, and I said this to Tawana, of our own oil. Sometimes I think that the greatness and the value of our own oil scares us because we've seen a glimpse of it. All of us have seen a glimpse of what God wants to use us and how 
God wants to use us. We've all seen a glimpse and it's, it's bigger than where you are right now. Woo, Jesus. That's true. It's bigger than where you are now. And it's not within your capacity right now. You've all seen a glimpse. Whether it's ministry, marketplace, it doesn't matter. You've all seen a glimpse. <laughs> but are we willing to be crushed? Now, the, the great died the moment it was plucked from the tree. But now to make value of a dead grape. Now to make value of a dead olive. It requires question. It requires it. And so how we process, because some of us have come through trauma. Some of us have come through all of the things that we could list and identify. And so we, we may not, have pure definitions. We may not have pure lenses that we're looking through to interpret our current moment or our current season. And that's why I felt so moved to stick with this today, that our, our oil has so much value. Your oil has so much value. So much value. Uh, Reverend Miyoshi, I see your hand. Come on in. I see y'all. I'm going to get to you. Hello, Mother. Hey, Bishop. Hey, Hello, hey, everybody. Um, Tawana, you just messed me up. I had my thoughts all together, but it's so true because a year and a half ago, um, I was in a place of extreme, over the top crushing. Mm. I was angry, I was mad, and y'all excuses, I was pissed. Yeah. Mother knows I'm real, I just make yeah. it plain. Yeah. And I talked to mother, to bishop, and I, I was so angry. I was angry at my bishop, I was angry at my denomination. I was angry at the, with the, with, what was going on I felt like that they had done us so wrong. I just, I was a mess. And I had died. I had died. And I was complaining. And I guess I, I complained to any and everybody that would listen. <laughs> and one Saturday, morning I was on the phone with you complaining mad angry ready to quit I, I won't do this no more and you said to me because <laughs> I was like why would they do this to me and you said to me daughter let me let me be tell you the truth if I was your bishop I would not move you either. Just like this silence I just had did, I had to, that was like, huh? No, you ain't supposed to say that to me. That's not what, that's not what I'm supposed to hear. But because of the value, because of, 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 of the wine and the oil, that was upon me and within me that I wasn't allowing to, 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 to direct me and understand, they, 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 that's it. It's the, uh, the understanding yes. of it. Yes. And when you said today, understanding our crushing, uh, understanding and being able to interpret it yes. in the way that God, the Holy Spirit wants us to, no, I had my own interpretation. <laughs> it was like, and it wasn't nothing, but it was my own interpretation. They was crushed. Uh, they, they were crushed me. No, you know, they were against me. No, it was part of the process. And I, you know, I fought it. I, I mean, I'm telling you, I was angry, y'all. It stank. 
Okay. My, the smell is stank. It was, it was on everything about it. It was just, it was nasty. My wine was bitter. And I'm like, you bitch, I'm like bitter wine. Mm -mm. It was, I mean, to the point that, you know how, and my oil was rank. Yeah. That's the word. That's the word. Rank. Yeah. It was rank. Yeah. yeah. And I had to come to an understanding that it wasn't, the crushing wasn't honestly meant to really kill me. I allowed it to. But if I had seen it or received it differently, if that makes sense, I think yes. I'm saying something. Yes. yes. You know, it, and I thank God now um, I'm at a very different place. Yes. Um, and, and it hurt. It even hurt. Tell you the truth, what Bishop said to me, I was like, oh no. You know, there was a minute I was like, okay, she done missed it too. She ain't understanding what I'm saying. <laughs> That's how messed up I was. I was like, yeah, yeah. you know, and I know that she's going to speak truth to me. But at that moment, because of my crushing and, and my lack of understanding, and even, you know, and this is the other thing too, it's not just the understanding, but to be able to receive. Yes. 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 That's it right there. There you go. There you yeah. Go. So, go. you know, um, I but, you, but, but I you, thank God. But you, you sound so much better. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. Yeah, we listen. There's sweet oil in that jar now. Flies can get in the apothecary's ointment. That's what the Bible says. Uh, Ecclesiastes ten talks about how flies can get in our ointment, and it causes it causes our oil to smell. Mm -hmm. we, we, can, we can allow flies in. Yes. And, uh, you know, it, when, when flies is up in that, uh, it, the ointment begins to smell. It loses its sweetness. Yep. But you, are, you sound, I mean, it's amazing because our attitude changes, our disposition. Absolutely. You know, we carry ourselves. Now watch you with your jewelry thing. And I said, oh, she getting it. She getting it. <laughs> I didn't know you watched that. Oh, <laughs> you know, I know, I know my tribe. <laughs> amen. Amen. Can I just say one more thing, Mother? Sure. Um, I want to say to my sisters on here. Um, and, and mother said this earlier. Be careful and be intentional into whom you allow to be in your ear. That's right. Be discerning. Yes. Because not everyone, and we are, I know we know this, but I, I just led by the Holy Spirit to say this. Not everyone wants to see what God has shown you that's in you to manifest. Yes, yes. Did I say that right there? Holy yes. Spirit, thank you. Yes. Please. Um, because it can add a necessary, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it can prolong the crushing. Like how mother said, come on up out of it. Okay, it's then happen. Let the crushing happen and come on. Yeah. But others can be in your ear to cause you to prolong. Yes. Linger. Yes. Yes. That's the word. Thank you. Mom. Thank you. Because, because they're not well. Yes. And their, their, their oil stinks and they want your oil to smell like their oil, because trust me, if your oil smells better than their oil, then you, now you're going to have a problem with them mm. and misery loves company. So you have to find the high road. You have to find the high road. And often the high road is a voice. Uh, and I was so glad, you know, you, you guys reached out to me, but you've been, I've been in mm -hmm. your life for a long time. So 
You reached Almost out. Almost 40 years. And, yeah, and I, <laughs> I didn't give you what everybody else gave you, but it began to heal you. Amen. It began to bring the good out of you. It began Amen. to change the direction and course of your thinking. And ladies, we need that in our ears. We need to speak truth in love. We need to speak truth in love. We don't need to be like, oh, well, I understand. I, yeah, girl, I got you. Uh-uh, no, you, look, let's go. Come on up. Let's, let's, let me tell me what you're going through and let me help you interpret that. Belinda, come on in, precious. Thank you. I'm going to go to Karen, Dr. Watson, then I'm going to come to Zelma. Then Catrice, I'll end with you. Uh, good morning. Bless you, Bishop. Good morning. Uh, I, I, my, my current crushing, I'm in a crushing and I feel like um, I need to bleed a little, but I need somebody, I need you or whoever on the line to speak truth and love. I feel like I took my, I bought my mother home to my house and I feel like it was an emotional move and not a God-led move. Why do you feel like that? Uh, my mother is, um, she has no fruit, no, oh, well, she does have fruit, but it's rotten fruit. And um, it, it's just a, she vomits on me every day. <laughs> she's just, she's very angry uh, about her health, uh, having to move out of her home, uh, she's been in a adulterous relationship for probably 47 years. So living with me has disconnected uh, that relationship, just angry, angry, angry. And I was thinking about, um, I did do some fasting during the month of September. Um, and a couple of things I heard is that uh, I have no sacred space. And um, so I'm just in that, I'm trying to figure out, should I put my mother in a nursing home, move her out of my house and put her in a nursing home? My brother and I, my brother does come and help me with her. And I did hire somebody to come in nine to five to give me some break from that. But uh, she's been with me two years this month. And prior to that, uh, her coming, I felt like I had a tent of meeting. My, I was just so disciplined in my devotion, in my prayer life, in my study time. And just, it's like, I cannot get a flow. I cannot, it got interrupted. I'm just struggling to get it back. I'm just, I, like the lady just said, I feel like um, and I know that the Lord uncaps my all all the time, but right now I feel so stagnant. And I have prayed and asked the Lord because I had no, um, no speaking engagement since the uh, COVID. And I just had prayed and asked the Lord, was this my season? I think I said this on the line before, just, uh, is this my season that I'm going to just be down? I'm, just not going to have any um, interaction outside of this. And in the midst of that, I did get a, I got a request to speak. And I felt like that was um, the answer that the Lord was answering me when that happened. But just, I'm just in such a struggle on what to do with my mother and my relationship with her. We don't have a mother and daughter um relationship and um her memory care doctor really talked to me about that and gave me some great insight as to why because I became her caretaker and prior to that we were never really close so I'm just in the struggle I'm in the struggle on whether my it was an emotional move because my brother was dying when I took her in, just so much was happening in my family. It was like, okay. And she had fallen and uh, hurt herself really bad. So me taking her in, just, I feel like I did not take the time that I should have and really sought the Lord on whether I should have moved her in with me or let her go to 
a nursing I, I wish you could see my face because if i was near you i'd knock you out your chair okay i see your face do you Bishop. see my face yes ma'am I, I need it. you to see my face i see it speak to truth are, are, we, are we are we talking about your mother the lady that birthed you yes ma'am do you hear you yes ma'am okay i hear me all right so we will talk offline but let me just say this to you it is the will of god that your mother is with you right now it is the will of god with your little arrogant self i cannot believe you talking like this what her, what does her adultery got to do with you <laughs> what what they got to do you her child you're not a pastor I, I don't think it has anything to do with But the fact that you me. even, in, the fact that you integrate that in your conversation. Okay. That's, that, that ain't got nothing to do with you. And, and, and. Does her, and, does her anger have anything to do with me? Does no, the way she treat me have anything to do with me? Uh, probably not. But I can tell you this, that the way you treat her has everything to do with you. Well, I really, I do, I feel like I put forth an effort. Or no, really... no, you ain't, no, you ain't putting forth no effort. You ain't doing <laughs> none of that. No, you ain't. So let me, I ain't celebrating nothing. I, I do, do okay, so, so let me say this. I ain't you. celebrating nothing. None of it. You ain't, I, no, no, so I, I have, celebrate. I do, I do act. I do. No, I do you try, take care no, of I, I, I got to get my prayer life back. I got to get my, your prayer life is sitting in your house. Your prayer life, your prayer life is your mother right now. Oh Not your God. your ministry right now is your mother. That is, uh, you see, listen. Winter, spring, summer, fall. You do different things in different seasons. You are not in a season of going out preaching. You're in a season now preaching to your mother, loving on your mother and getting your mother healed, getting your mother well. That's the season you're in, preacher. Well, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to and, touch and that, her. And, and that, maybe and I, got, I don't really want to touch her either. Yeah, and, <laughs> and that and that is a problem because here it is. If you cannot minister to her, you can't minister to me. You can't minister to nobody, honey. Your pulpit right now is in your house and you got an audience of one. You have an audience of one and now you see that your oil may have a little fly in it yes, I'm sure. the thing that i love about god is that he will bring back to us our own funk it ain't your mother god working on it's you and god is using your mother and this season that she's in to show you you i think i put this up not long ago whenever we go through something guess what god don't show you nobody else I remember that, <laughs> I, and I and I took that to heart. Yeah, he's showing I, I you. I remember you, that, and I took that to heart. Yeah, and, uh, he's showing you you. He's showing you your heart. He's showing you your unforgiveness. He, he this ain't got nothing to do with your mama. This has nothing to do with your mama. She he is dealing with you about you. Then I probably need to go through deliverance. Okay, well, that may be true, but guess what? Your deliverer is in your house. <laughs> and her name is Mama. <laughs> Tell me yeah. Jesus. And, and this is probably how long? How old, how old were you when you first? And how long have you carried this, you know, against your mother? And God would have it so that the lot would fall on you because now you got to be well in order for God to use you. You don't have nothing for nobody right now. And whatever season that you were in, I thank the Lord for it, but the seasons change. And now in order for God to promote you and take you to your next place, wherever that is, you got to pass this test and you're not doing so good. No, I, I'm failing it on a daily basis. <laughs> you, you're, not, you're not doing so good, sugar. So all that prayer life that you had and all that word life that you had, it ain't really working, is it? Mm -mm. No, ma'am. <laughs> because it doesn't get to the core of you. 
We do it as a, as robotic. We do it as religious. We do it as a ministry in uh uh what what's the word I want to say uh, a, a a ministry regimen. We do it, but but it ain't helping your heart. It's not healing you. It's not delivering you. So all your regimen, all your time of prayer, all your time of studying. Guess what? Here's your test. And the test came in the form of your mother. And with all of the prayer, girl, if I was next to you, you'd be on the floor right now. I would have me an oil bottle and a towel because we going through, all right? <laughs> I, 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 I should have told you that on the day of Pentecost. <laughs> me and yes, you, yes, <laughs> yes. We could have got this done. You could have had that surgery and been already through recovery. <laughs> well, I need to I need to go through the livers. I need to make a... I need to make a yeah, trip because, to because Detroit because so I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. Uh, and it's okay. Listen, I, I'm in Detroit. You get on a plane, have somebody take care of your mama, come up here one Saturday, and we will, I'll walk you through this. You do not need, you are stuck. And, and it's not stuck as a woman. You're stuck as a girl, a little child. You're talking like a little girl. You're talk so wherever your trauma was, whatever the trauma was at whatever age, you've gotten stuck there. And ministry has given you a roundabout, whereas you can go around it. You can go, but you never had to go. You have never dealt with it. And this is a crushing, baby, that is so necessary for your next level. And God will use your mother because that's where, that's an issue. That that is a that is a, a a real issue, and I get it. I can walk you through it. But let me just tell you something. Right now, you have got to understand that if you don't handle that woman better, if you don't handle her better, long before we get to the clinical intervention, long before we get to the, some deliverance, if you don't right now in this moment make a decision to treat her better. I, we got to get through the forgiveness. We got to get through all of that. And I'll get with that one-on-one. -on -one. But right now, you got to make a decision. I got to treat this woman better. I got to treat her better. I got to treat her with honor. I got to treat her with respect. I gotta, I've got to treat her with dignity. And you ain't got to like nobody to do that. You don't have to like somebody. You ain't even got to love somebody to treat somebody with respect, to treat someone with honor, and to treat someone with dignity. That doesn't require love. That doesn't require knowledge. That doesn't require intimacy. And it doesn't require an exchange. That's a decision. you got to decide that right now, and I need you to do that. I need you to understand that this crushing is for your good. And God knows that this is an area that you have needed deliverance in all your life. So now, ain't it wonderful that he loves you so much that he will bring it right back to you before he release you to the world? Before he sends you forth? That COVID is a good cover-up. Won't nobody need to know that you on lockdown, you on shutdown, because COVID now is a great cover-up. But God is there dealing with your heart, honey. Dealing with your heart. And it's, uh, it's other prisoners in there. We'll get to all the prisoners. But I want to deal with that one because you believe she hard to be the warden of your prison. But you're the warden. And she is a prisoner in your prison cell. But we're going to get you free. I'm going to get you free. But in the meantime, you have got to decide, this is a vow between you and God, that you will treat her with dignity, you will treat her with honor and you will treat her with respect. I don't care if you go in that room tomorrow and she got on a green bozo uh, outfit with a red nose on the top of her head. I don't care. You have to treat her with dignity, with honor and with respect. You got to do that. That You must do that. You cannot preach no place. Don't nobody want to hear you now. You don't have nothing to say to nobody. You got to do this. Melinda Wright, you got to do this. Okay, so I do. Uh, no, no, I no. I don't disrespect her. 
Yes, um, you do. Yeah, 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 you, yeah, you do. 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 In your mind. In my mind, yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes. You don't respect her. In your yes. mind, you don't respect her. In your yes. heart, you don't honor her. Don't yes. tell me, girl, I done been, look, I'm going to help you. I okay. can help you. Okay. I'm talking I'm, about in your mind. I, you got, I'm in agreement. I am not yeah. disagreeing. I'm not you got to honor her in you your said. mind. You got to honor mm -hmm. her in your heart. You got to respect her. Respect is not an action. It's a thought. Honor is a thought. It's a decision. You have to make a decision to honor. You have to make a decision to respect. That's a decision. And that's not in your heart, not your treatment, not your external action. Because my external actions are, I do externally, I take very good care of her. But in my sure. heart. Yeah. 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 Your heart. I go above and beyond externally. Yeah, I believe you. I believe you do. I believe, I believe you do. But I ain't but talking my, about that. But my heart is far from her. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I, yeah. No problem with that. I don't have no problem with that. I don't have no problem saying it. But it's your crushing. And so what we want to make sure is that at the end of this surgery that God has you in, that you produce sweet oil and sweet wine. And we just have to work with it. Let's let's get some dates together, and you you get here to me, and we just take we we will handle it. I have no problem walking you through this. Okay. And you're gonna be all right, and Mama is too. And uh, now, have you allowed her boyfriend to come see her? Oh yes, he comes once a week. Praise the Lord. That's his decision. He comes once a week. Um. Uh, I cook fish for them every time they come. I make All a right. place for them. All yeah, right. he, comes, he comes once a week. Lord, help me. All right. <laughs> no, he is helping you. <laughs> he is helping you. Yeah. Listen, when the Samaritan stopped and picked up the thief or the man that was lying dead, he didn't ask him nothing about his lifestyle. He didn't ask, he didn't, he didn't seek to agree or disagree. We don't need to agree with folk to help folk. Because I, I, I don't. Good. I don't. I mean, every time he walks in my house, I think about, you know, he's left his home where he's living with another woman to come to my house. But I don't. It's in my heart. <laughs> but my external actions, I let him come. Good. <laughs> I Good. don't like it, but I let him come. <laughs> why, why do you like, why do you not like it? It ain't got nothing to do with you. You don't even you don't have a dog in the fight or a clown in the in the circus. You know, I guess that's what I got to get with. <laughs> and I, I think you. you know it bothers me extremely that my mother, I, it don't have nothing to do with do with us, but everything that she has for forty something years. That's who she poured her everything into. She poured all of her love, everything into him. And in her current state, um, you know, she feels like that if, you know, he had have chose her, she would be able to be in her own home and he would be there with her at night. And yeah. But listen, there ain't none of I that. I need to live this. But ain't none of that got nothing to do with you. And that ain't none of that your business. That ain't even your business. You don't know where she put her love. You don't know what she, where she you don't know. Externally, you like don't you're know. telling me. You don't know. You don't know. And you don't know her why. You don't know. And it ain't none of your business. You're her child. You are her daughter. You have no right in that room. You have no right in that space. You are totally out of order. You have no right in that space. You don't have access to that space. And God ain't going to show you nothing up in there. You ain't going to get no revelation. And God ain't going to say nothing to you about it because it ain't your room. That's your mama's room. No, and that do with you. Nothing. 
You need to be her daughter. You need to be her child. You don't need to be her parent. That ain't got nothing to do with you, babe. It really doesn't. And however you feel like you have a right to be in that room, listen, trust me, bag up out that room and close that door. You don't have anything to do with that. You won't answer to God for it. You can't pray about it because it ain't your right to pray. You can't stand in the gap. You can't do I don't that. don't worry about it. You're Why? Why? About Why? Because God ain't listening to you. Yes. You don't have a right to pray for that. If she don't ask you to pray for it, you have no authority to pray for that. Your position under her does not give you the right to pray for that. What you point? That got nothing to do with you. How do we get in these spaces? How do we get in these spaces? But that's long. That goes way deep. It goes way deep. So we got some envy in there. We got some jealousy. We got some blame. We got some shame. We got some unforgiveness. We're going to get it all out. When you get to me, give me two days. Find two days in your calendar for the end of this year. And you come to me. When you go back home, you're going to be a different woman. And you're going to be a better child. And when it's all over, you'll be a phenomenal preacher. Praise the Lord. I got you. I got you. Find me two days. So do I need to email you so you can? Yes. Yep. Find me two days, probably November, like a Friday, Saturday, and then stay over for Sunday and go back home Sunday night. Okay. Yes, ma'am. We're going to get you free because the world is waiting on you. (laughs) This This is so good. This 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 is why. Yes. Can I just come in before the other three just to say to Melinda? Jump in, the, jump in, the, the, the spirit of Bishop's word. The, there's a prophetic word that's coming to you now, Melinda, and you have got to execute starting now. Wow. Today. You can't wait until you get to Bishop at the end of the year. Your work and the execution, like it says in Ecclesiastes, it is speedily. You have to execute speedily. That's the word I wanted to put in your spirit. That word that's coming from Bishop now is a prophetic word to you that you must receive in your spirit now and act now. Wow. That's all I wanted to share. Oh, that, that ain't no all. That's a whole lot. Thank God for all the prophecy. Thank God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Oh, glory. He shot out I'm going to tell you something, how God deals with us and our parents. I just want somebody to remember that if we want our days to be long, we need to, we need to operate in that first commandment. It's honor thy father and thy mother. Don't say nothing about agree. It says honor. It says honor that your days would be long. And I need, we need you in the earth, Melinda Wright. We need you in the earth. And you're in a dangerous, very fragile space. But we're going to get you through it. That's the tribe. We got you. We're going to get you through it. But Praise you, the Lord. We, you, you're going to get through it. And, yes. and, and your oil, when this is over, will be a sweet oil. And, and it will open up so much for you that is currently shut down because of your position emotionally with your own mother. And I deal with this a lot with women. Mm-hmm. I don't know what this is with women and their mothers. I don't know what that is because I, I, I can't I can't see that, but I, I, there is nothing in the world that would make, I was speaking to another woman of God last year or so, and she was telling me about these problems that she was having with her, her mother, and I said, baby, how old are you? And she was 40, my grandmother raised me and all that. And I, I get that. I, I understand that. I said, but let me tell you something. You got children. You, you sometimes that relationship with your mother was shut down. Now this, y'all don't want to hear this, but it was shut down. You even getting married. It was mm-hmm. shut down. You being able to conceive children. My that, that bitterness goes deep. Mm-hmm. And it will shut you off. It was, 
It will make you unattractive. It will give you an aroma that will not attract men. This is why some women turn to women because men don't, are not attracted to that stench, that oil. Okay, there is something about a woman who, who is pure and her oil is, is good, that is attractive, that causes men to want to be in your presence. There is something about it. And, and I don't know, you know what that is, but I can tell you this, when that oil, and I, I know my age and I know, you know, I got a line of them, praise God. I, I, I try to, in the name of Jesus, I need prayer for that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Y'all need to pray for me. Oh my good Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Young, old, black, white, because men know the smell of pure oil. And even in your marriage, you got to be careful that even, you know, that you keep your oil pure and yes. sweet. Yes. Praise God. I run into a lot of barren women. And when I get in there, it's, a, it's something with them and their mother. I run into a lot of single women. It's something about them and their mother. You know, and I get into that and, I, and they get married or their wombs open. They start having children. There is, there is, there is something that the enemy wants to put in us to make us hate our own mothers. Yes. And we have to be very mindful of that, folks. That we have to be very mindful of that. You know, it, it, it's, it's, it's just something that the enemy uses against us. And we have to mm. be mindful of it. Selma, jump in, baby. Come on. I'm coming to you, Dr. Watts. And then All I'm right. coming Thank to you. Our time is almost up. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm so excited. I'm just excited. And I was, um, the part about the grieving was somebody passing. And I wanted to talk about that because um, I experienced my 19 year old daughter. We were having a conversation in the middle of a conversation. And in the middle of the conversation, God called her home right in front of me. No sickness, no diseases, no nothing. But I said to God, you know, I, I don't want these doctors coming to tell me nothing that you know, we in a relationship. I need you to tell me what's going on. So God said three things to me. He said, it's my doings. She's not going to make it. And I need you to trust me. That's all he said. He said nothing else. So with that being said, the doctors and everything did what they did. They took me to this room and asked me, you know, could they work on her and this and that. And I said, yes, you know, because I was so assured and so confident that I heard God. And they took me in this room. I was, uh, I was tired from work. So in the room, I said, God, now was that you or, or is that just something? He said, it's me. I went into such a peaceful sleep wow. in this room. I, this, listen, let me tell you, this, this sleep was so peaceful. I never had sleep like that before. So the doctors came busting in there an hour later, the nurses and doctors crying, laying all over the floor. And I'm like, and they were so angry at me because I was asleep. They said, how could you be asleep when your daughter is in here dying and we're trying to do everything we can? I said, sir, why are you yelling at me? I said, let me tell you something. The God I serve gave me three answers to my question I gave him. I asked him a question. I said, God, I have a relationship with you. I need you to tell, I don't want no doctors coming back telling me nothing. I need you to tell me what's going on. And he told me these three things. He said, it's his doings. She not going to make it. And I have to trust him. He didn't ask nobody else to do nothing. He told me to trust him. And I was so at peace with that because he said it. So they came and they was angry and everything. So then I called my pastor and I called my, I called Crystal's sister and my, uh, my daughter's best friend, you know. And the next thing I know, the hospital was flooded with folk. But in the flooding of the, the hospital, everybody was so destroyed. My pastor said, oh, they done did something to her. There's no way she, no, you need to get a lawyer. You need to get an autopsy. You need to do this. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, God, what is wrong with these people? They trying to make me do something you didn't say. I'm not taking nobody to court. I'm not pressing charges. What am I pressing charges for? You said what you said. 
Okay, the doctors is upset because their science and all their knowledge can't figure you out. Okay, do people believe you like I believe you? Are they questioning what you say? He said, but I didn't say it to nobody but you. I didn't say it to nobody but you. Right. So with him saying that to me, I said, okay, God. So now I'm walking around trying to uh, 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 comfort everybody else. And my pastor's wife, she's standing in the corner. She looked and she's saying, this is just so amazing. This lady is ministering to people. And it's her daughter in there laying there at 19 years old. No, not sick, have no diseases. have no. But God said he only allotted her 19 years. And I did my best. I was just so excited. I've been excited ever since. Do you know people are still saying that I'm in denial of her death? I'm no grieve. So I started asking God, why can't I grieve like everybody else? Why can't I fight, cry, cry, fall out, spit, and, and roll all over the place? Why I can't no. do that? He said, why? He said, why? What would be the purpose? To show people or do you believe me? I said, oh, oh, oh. So I've been going on with Jesus excited yes. ever since. And so then they was telling me about, you know, going to the cemetery. You knew, I ain't going to no cemetery, nobody there. I went to check her headstone. It was fine. They had the picture and everything. So I just recently visited Philadelphia. So the spirit of the Lord said, just go look at the headstone. I don't never go to the cemetery. So when I told my son that, he was like, you was at, oh my God, that had to be God telling you. But I went because they didn't take care of her headstone. With the COVID and the burying of bodies, they sure. quit been just busting up everybody's headstone. That's right. Her yeah. picture was shattered. Her picture was shattered. So the Lord said, okay, you saw it. Let's go. You know, I went, called them, and they're going to tell me I got to pay it. I said, ma'am, I will call the, the, the memorial man that fixed my headstone, and I will send you the bill. So she said, oh, no, 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 no. Let me go see it. I said, okay, you can go see it. But if you telling me that I, I'm not paying for it, I paid for what I need. It was your responsibility to maintain the, the product that's given into your care. So I'm not going to pay for it. So God said, you told her what you had to tell her, you leave it alone. Ha, why? Ha, ha, shamba he about God to get everybody right. Three days later, she called me. She says, you know what? Miss Flood, you're right. It does look like it was hitting. Yes, ma'am. She says, if you could do me this favor, send me a, a new picture. And I'll get my people to get it together. Uh -huh. And a matter of fact, the young lady that's in the same grade with her, if you send me a picture of her, we'll just do it all for you. Wow. Wow. I said, look at God. So I know that sometimes I still laugh about it. That some people, like the uh, previous lady was talking about, they was trying to call her the day before and all that. People still call me and say, uh, you okay? You didn't get a chance to grieve yet? I don't have to. He didn't, he told me I will not grieve right. because I believed him. So I'm saying to anybody, don't let nobody put you in a space where you yeah. don't belong. That's right. Especially when you heard the voice of God. And I heard him clearly that day. He yeah. said he didn't tell nobody but me, but I shared it with my son because my son and my daughter had such a good relationship. And my son been fine ever since. He had one incident and the Lord said that he needs to have this one outpour because he needs me to know how much he really cared for his sister. Wow, wow. But I'm telling you, Bishop and, and tribe sisters, don't let nobody cause you to act unseemly when you don't have to. Come on here. Come on here. Praise look. God. That's all I got today, Bishop. Look, that, look, that, that ain't no all you got. <laughs> that's, that's huge. Woo! And that's how about and, and, and baby, thank you for that. And uh, come on, Dr. Karen Jenkins, while I tell we got we got 14 minutes. So y'all come on, I got one more scripture I'll give you. This is so good. Dr. Watch you are muted. Unmute, unmute. You gotta unmute. Dr. Watch you are muted. Unmute, unmute. There you go. Uh oh, wait, wait, what happened? You're okay. Nope, come up. Come up a little bit more. Nope, I still can't hear you. It's, 
It's it's an odd kind of sound coming from your mic. It, it sound it sound like Mickey Mouse. So go out and come back. Go out and come back in. Yeah, go out and come back in. Oh, this is so good, you guys. Hey, TikTok, come on, Catrice, while she go out and come back. Bishop, this is for me. Um, Melinda was talking about about her mother, and when you were talking about that that crushing and just being in that space, this is something I struggle with my whole life. Yeah. And when we talk about the crush, I feel like my interpretation of the crushing has been off because I feel like, okay, well, how long are we going to get crushed? You know what I'm saying? Like, when does it end? Or what does that feel like to just get up, the get up part? But the stuff with the, with Melinda, I just want to say, everybody, you ain't the only one. Okay. I struggle with that. I struggle with uh, appropriately honoring And... I'll probably have to get with you offline for real, okay. for real. But okay. this is for, for me. I'm single. I have that's my daughter. That painting is a picture of my daughter that I miscarried. I have not been married. I've been through so many of the things that you talked about. And I know what you were talking about and getting that right and making that right. I have tried and tried and tried just for years. You know, just... <laughs> Now I'm in a situation where, you know, like I felt the crush and then I pull back. I, I'll notice there's something, I'll interpret it like, you know, like the Samaritan woman, what blessed me about the Samaritan woman is that she actually went in. Like, I know I ain't no silver spoon. I'm not from no privileged family. I'm not from money. And I'm put in these places. But instead of me going in and, and pouring my oil or, being focused on the assignment, I have a tendency to be like, oh, I don't belong here. So it's just a lot. And I just wanted to say that. Um, well, let me tell you this, baby, and I, I appreciate your honesty, but let me just tell all of us this. In the crushing, God is only changing you. He's not changing your situation and he's not yeah. changing the other people. Yeah. He's changing you. So there is something that we need to understand. Zelma said it. Some of you others understand it. In the crushing, ain't nobody in that, in that bat but you. And it's always easier to make it look like it's somebody else that God needs to change. Or somebody else that needs to do something. Or somebody else that needs to. No, your expectations of your mother is jacked up, period. Period. Your expectations of your mother are jacked up. You cannot expect a banana to be a coconut. And every time you eat that banana, it's going to taste like banana. It ain't going to never taste. Your expectations is what God is crushing. It's your yeah. expectations. We don't like that kind of conversation with God, that the only person that's getting crushed is you. So as much as we would like to say it's my mom or it's my husband or it's my church, or it's my denomination. No, it's you in the vat. It's you under the mortar. It's you. What is God crushing in you? And it's always so much easier for us to say, if she would change, or if he would change, or if they would change, or what? No, God said, hey, look, I'm here to change you. The crushing is always about us. It's never about the other people. Even if the people are, we're looking at them and they got the mortar in their hand. It ain't about them. And that's what we always try to do is to point the finger. Because guess what? We don't want to think we wrong. We don't want to think that we have to change. We don't think that we have to modify our behavior. Mm -hmm. We don't think that we have to improve our, mm -hmm. our mental health, our mm -hmm. well-being. 
We mm-hmm. want somebody else to be responsible. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but Thanks when you're Lord, being Lord. crushed, ain't nobody there but you. <laughs> Woo, glory. And your expectations are wrong. And if your expectations are will change in the crushing, you'll get a season of reprieval. Yes. But the only way you ever going to get a season to breathe is you got to change. You got to do the grunt work. You got to do the hard work. You got to understand that it's your oil that God is working on. He ain't working on nobody else's oil. And it's your wine that God is working on. He ain't working on nobody else's wine. That's right. Mm. Bishop. Yes. 35. This is Miyoshi. 30, about over 30. 30 seconds. 30 seconds. 35 plus years ago. Yeah. You helped me with learning to love my mother. Yeah. Yeah. And and the exact words you just said now is that my expectations were incorrect. Yes. Not in order of what I had for my mother. Wow. And I was able to, and I had to forgive and let go of anything that I expected in her to be. And when I let go of that, I learned to love my mother. And we went from uh, an unhealthy relationship to for the first 25 years to the last, my mother died last May for uh, uh, 40, 50 years of love, sharing her, under, me understanding her, accepting who she was, how she was, because it wasn't none of my business. None of your business. But none of my business. So Melinda, okay. I'm telling yeah. you. Listen, and you and Melinda need to get together. You, uh, Mio, Dr. Miosha, you need to get together. Y'all need to get together on a phone conversation. And then uh, that will help to anesthetize her for the surgery that I'm going to perform. Amen. <laughs> Y'all need to get together. And, and, and we're going to get this. Listen, folks, Amen. I'm telling you, the crushing is never about you. <laughs> Thea said, we're going to buy a house in Detroit. We all, we, we all coming. Praise God. I'm telling you. And, and it's your oil God is working on. It's your oil. That was that man's oil that he poured. That was his wine that he served. We want to make this about somebody else. I, w- I was reading this scripture and I'll give this to you. Let's go to uh, Luke 22 and we'll close it there. We got three minutes. And it says in verse 39 in Luke chapter, and I love Luke, Luke chapter number 22 uh, Dr. Uh, Watts, your, there is something going on with your mic because it's still giving me this kind, kind of, you know, if you would uh, leave Zoom and come back in, right? Leave Zoom and come back in. I'll let you back in. And that, that way you can come back in. Because it's something, it might have been just a bad connection sometimes. So um, Luke 22, 39, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives. That's important for you to recognize. And his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. I want us to just look at 39. Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives. All right, everybody see that? Underline that in your Bible. So he he withdrew, verse 41, about a stone's throw beyond them. We know this story. Knelt down and prayed, Father, if you are willing. Wow, we all say this, don't we? Take this cup from me. (laughs) We all say this, don't we? Why me? Why I got to go through this? We all say it. Why my daughter got to die? Why my mama? Why my my daddy? Why my husband? Why this? Come on, we all. Lord, please let this cup pass from me. But not my will, thy will be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. 44, and being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly and his sweat 
was like drops of blood falling to the ground. Now, I just want us to see this and maybe you don't see it like I see it and it's okay, you can, it's all right. But you know, I, I see things a little different from text a lot of times. Number one, I wanna, I wanna pay attention to the location, the Mount of Olives. I want to also pay attention to the experience that Jesus was having here. We call this the Garden of Gethsemane, but it, the Garden of Gethsemane was the base of the Mount of Olives. And the Mount of Olives is called the Mount of Olives because it's a mountain that olives grow on, right? It's not like just somebody's name. It was the Mount of Olives. I've had the privilege of visiting that place and to watch the, the olive pickers go down this mountain and pick these olives because olives grow up a mountain. And to watch that is just like, oh my God, all that they do. But at the bottom of the mountain, which is called the Garden of Gethsemane, there's this huge oil press. And when you go and visit this, there's this, I don't know if you've ever seen an oil press, you can Google it, but it's a big wheel. And what they would do on the mountains as after they picked the, the olives, they would bring them to the Garden of Gethsemane and they would pour all of their little olives into this big, huge press. And then those that were the oil pressers, they would, roll, they would walk around this big circle and they would take this big wheel and press all these olives. I want you to pay attention to that. I want you to understand, I don't think we dig deep enough in the text when we're trying to preach or when we're trying to share a word, things matter. Why was this prayer that Jesus prayed taking place at the oil press? This isn't by coincidence. This is not something that needs to be overlooked. That's why hermeneutics is so important. Jesus is praying. We, we talk about the Garden of Gethsemane, but if you don't understand what was happening every day in that garden is where the oil for the entire region was produced. This mountain of olives is where the olives grew for the entire region. There were some other smaller mountains that had some olives, but this was the main source of olives for the region. And where Jesus is praying is where the oil was produced from the olives. Why is Jesus praying here? Why is this prayer being prayed in this location? Because Jesus had to be crushed. Come on, Brenda Skillman, for the assignment. Not even Jesus could accomplish what he needed to accomplish and not be crushed. Look what happened. First of all, he's in the Garden of Gethsemane. He takes his disciples there. What happens? They go to sleep. But you know what? It wasn't their assignment. So he comes back out. He tries to wake them back up. And guess what? They sleep again. Why? Because when you're being crushed, it ain't nobody else's assignment but yours. God won't even let people pray for you when you're being crushed. Because there is no intercession because the one that's crushing you is the one that they're trying to pray to. 
So God won't let people pray. God won't even let them watch. He put them to sleep. And the third time he came out. And he said, dang, y'all can't even tarry one hour. And they didn't know why they were sleeping. They didn't know that they were being put to sleep by the Lord. Because this is something you got to do for yourself, by yourself. The third thing I want you to pay attention to, the location, the abandonment. And then the third thing that I want you to realize is that Jesus had to go into a deeper place. The first time it was not as deep. The second time it was not as deep. The Matthew 22 text says, and he went in a little further. Now, each time he came out, he could have ran. But instead of running, guess what Jesus did? Number three, he made a decision. He made a decision. Calvary didn't crush him. Gethsemane crushed him. He died in Gethsemane long before he made it to Calvary. And if you don't die in Gethsemane, you ain't going to never make it to Calvary. And it took Jesus three times. It took him three times to press in, to get into that place, to go into that place, to move, to get in that. And he finally got there. Now he's intense. Look at number four. This is so intense. I want you to understand, Catrice. I want you to understand, y'all. This is intense. Melinda, it's intense. So much so that Jesus sweats. So he is perspiring. The disciples are asleep. They ain't perspiring. Your intercessors cannot perspire for this. <laughs> Your church can't perspire with this. I don't know. My church ain't with me. My leaders ain't with me. It ain't for them. It's yours. This is your bottle of oil. This is your bottle of wine. Your cruise of oil. Your glass of wine. Now he's sweating. So you know, look at the intensity. And yes, at first he said, look, please just take it away. Take it away. We all want, we all wish he would take it away. We all wish he would take it away. Take it away from me. Why I gotta go through this with my mama? Why I gotta go through this with my church? Why I gotta go through this with my pastor? Why I gotta, we all say the same things. Take it away. Take it away. No, I'm not taking it away. Because what is, what you're about to accomplish is so big. If you don't die here, you won't die there. You'll jump off the cross. If you don't die here, <laughs> you won't let them tie you. You won't let them nail you. God, I feel this Holy Ghost. If you don't die here, you will find another reason not to die over there. I need to kill you here. I need to kill you here, Jesus. I need to kill you emotionally. I need to kill it all. You need to feel alone. You need to feel abandoned. You need to feel rejected. You need to feel all of these emotions. You need to feel shame. You need to feel embarrassed. You need to be mad. You, I need you to feel it here. Because if you don't feel it here and deal with it here, then when you feel it, when they rip your garments, when they put that crown of thorn on your heads, when they nail your hands and they nail your feet, you, you ain't gonna know how to respond to that. And I don't need you to shout. The fifth thing I need you to understand that it was in private. Calvary was in public, but Gethsemane was in private. God knows I'm preaching. I got to go. <laughs> Y'all so busy trying to be excited about public ministry but you are not successfully winning in your private ministry. Then finally, <laughs> let me tell you this. This is also where the betrayal took place. This is where now Judas comes and brings all of the army, all of the army. And if he had come an hour earlier, Jesus might have had a bad attitude. But by the time Judas got there, 
Jesus had been crushed. Pay attention to the text, people. This text is loaded with everything that we need to see ourselves. Your oil takes crushing. And what you are calling the devil, what you are calling the enemy, what you are calling your mom, what you are calling your denomination, what you are calling your job, what you're calling your marriage, it ain't that at all. It's God. Isaiah picks it up and says, surely it pleased the Lord to crush him. Yay, glory to God. I got to go. <laughs> it pleases the Lord to crush you. It pleased the Lord to crush him that he might become the succor of the many. What are you willing to pay for your oil? You keep talking about you anointed. You ain't anointed. Your oil stinks. You got to have oil to be anointed. And you can't be anointed with oil until you are willing and you are submitted to the hand of God crushing you. It pleases the Lord to crush us. Well, God, we thank you for this tribe, Bob. We thank you for every time and any time that we missed it. Forgive us for not calling it as we should. Forgive us for naming it inappropriately. Forgive us for reacting poorly. Forgive us for carrying it and lingering in it much too long. I pray now for these great women of God, for those who are watching, those who will come later and watch the replay. I pray now that we will understand our Gethsemanes are unavoidable. The oil press is real. And there are seasons where it's not as intense. There are seasons where we can get some air. There are seasons where we can breathe. But the majority of the time we are always in one press or another. And Paul says that we must press toward the mark. We must press, it's a constant press. Let us not be weary in the press. So many people are waiting on our oil. So many people are waiting on their wine. So many people, generations, even that are not yet born, will be able to determine the value the proposition value of their oil and their wine. And we thank you that we are not weary in well-doing, that we will not faint, that we will endure to the end. Now, Lord, keep us in your care, in your grip, and in your gaze. Bless the work in their hands. Bless their ministry. Bless their minds. Bless their emotions. Bless their finances. Hold us, Father, that we might do your will and continue to publish the great word of the Lord. We give you praise for the calling and the election. Now, help us, Holy Spirit, to make it sure. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Y'all can unmute. Come on, unmute. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, Kathy. I'm all in my date. Come on, Sam. Oh, my God. My sisters, can I ask one thing of you? Yes, My sisters, can I ask one thing of you? Sure. As we go forth in this season, that we would pray for Bishop in the spirit only. Yes. That so that she will be restored, renewed, and revived. Yes, I want her Lord. about getting that R and R and that rest. Yeah, I need yes, that. Just was been heavy in my spirit because Amen. she's going to do be obedient to the Lord. She's going to be Amen. obedient yes. to the Holy Spirit. But we just mm -hmm. want to cover her in the spirit. Yeah. Don't pray in the natural. You pray yeah. in the spirit yes. so that yes. our, her, the spirit will connect with yes. her as she is ministering, as yes. she is praying, yes. so that mm -hmm. we are all. In 
the same realm. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. 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 Love yes. her. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Pours abundantly out to not just to us, but yes. globally. Yes. yes. Because this reaches globally. Yeah. Everything yes. that she does is global. Yes. Whether we mm -hmm. get it, understand it, like it, don't matter. So, child, yes. <laughs> yes. so much like my mother, it makes no sense. Amen. Um, Amen. 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 Yeah, Amen. Overseer Stevens, and, and she has a prayer team for Bishop also, and um, mm. we continuously pray on Tuesday, um, the third Amen. Thursday. Amen. Thursday, so she was covered totally. And also Bishop um, Bishop Elect also pray, praise. So you know, absolutely, the more the merrier for our bishop because yes. you know, those Amen. But what she does for the tribe is oh, yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. The Lord is Amen. commissioned on my heart. My birthday. Phenomenal. Tribe. We birthday need to go the end of the month. And unique. And unique. Yes. Receive it. I it. This is I a good see. place to sow seed too, ladies. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. Amen. 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 Anybody else feel that anointing for today for that yes. question? Yes. Oh yes. yes. So Amen. That when that when that Amen. word come like that, when it come like that, and Bishop present in such a way where she, like she just talking to us, but that be like the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, yes. 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 And when it go down deep like that, you got to pick that phone up, cash yeah. app right now. Y'all yes. should pick them up right now and do it yeah, right now. Yes. It, comes, yes. it comes raw and unapologetically, yes. too. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 So that seed, yes. Sash, yes. show it. So oh, I don't have so my little cost to offer. Cash app. I, I put it in the chat. I put it in the chat already. Um, oh, dollar sign it should be logged. It should be logged. Yeah. <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank you. I love y'all so much. Do uh, please remember okay. that um, this coming week, to well, I'm out of town next. When am I out of town? Um, I, okay. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, uh, Crystal, hold on, hold on. That's all right. No, no, it's, it's good. Wait, wait, I was going to end with that. I'm going to show them. Okay. Um, this coming, um, so I'm in Birmingham, Alabama, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I fly right. back to Detroit Monday. And then on Tuesday, I believe it is. Is that right? Uh, I thought it yeah, was on, on Tuesday at 19, I fly out to Cleveland, Tennessee, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Oh, I am gosh. meeting with the Pente the leadership at Pentecostal Theological yeah, Seminary. Wow. And uh, uh, what date is that again, Bishop? It's the 19th and the 19th, 20th, and I come back on the 21st. And uh, just hold on, just let me get that. There we go. Yeah. Bishop, where are you in Birmingham? Uh, I'll put it in. I put it. I don't know. You know, I don't know. Uh, but I put. I'll make sure that we put it on the uh, page. But, yes, um, ma'am. I will. But um, the uh, Pentecostal Theological Seminary has reached out uh, to me uh, to um, to train our leadership and to uh, make sure that our our, our school, which is Kingdom of Faith Bible College, which has been defunct now for about 10 years, that whatever courses that we offer, that they would accredit them. And uh, this is just an amazing collaboration. This Absolutely. comes out of camp meeting uh, mm -hmm. from my, one of my professors, Dr. Adewuya. He's going to be with us in November as well, in December. But he went back yelling about camp meeting and they're like, we need to get her here. So they've sent for me. This is amazing to come. I leave out on that Tuesday. Then the dean called and said, um, we want you to preach for chapel. Woo! So I will Hallelujah. be preaching for chapel on the 20th. And, Slay uh, some oil. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this <laughs> is just, like I say, you never know. One of, of my desires has, has been to procure a, a property that's uh, in our community so that um, I can do the school of the Holy Spirit. There is no school of the Holy Spirit in America that is undergrad or graduate. And so 
I'm learning now. I have South Africa on. Good morning, my sweetheart, uh, that, that are here. And um, I want uh, Crystal. I didn't know they did this. This this is just something that they did during camp meeting. Crystal, show show what you what you guys did. I was blown away. Felicia messed me up early this morning. <laughs> I was toe up. I almost couldn't get on the line. Here we go. Woo! Oh, hey. yes, yes. Woo! Glory to God. Mm. Hey, Kuro yes, yes, yes. Oh, glory. My, 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 God. And it's awesome. Beautiful. Awesome. Yeah, God. The property yeah, is God. already there. Do it. Um, we just are trying to procure the property, but mm -hmm. I, I just couldn't believe it. It just blew me away when I saw the visual of this and some of the ladies in the tribe, they paid to get this, but give me the next, you have the next slide as well with the community. And this has always been our vision. Mm. This is the vision of around the North, look at this, the North American campus, a living and learning community. Wow. Awesome. My, my. And Wonderful. these are all the houses around and people will come and I, the, the people will be able to, it's just amazing that they captured this and Crystal and her team, I didn't know they had done this. This was totally all y'all, whoever, whoever participated in this, I can just bite you. I just love you so much. <laughs> and um, uh, the Lord said, wait for it. The vision will come to pass. Amen. Uh, Amen. I, I, Amen. I think that even going to P, uh, PTS this next week is a part of this whole vision. Absolutely. Uh, just, you know, making sure, go back to the, uh, to the design of the, property now the property is at the corner of our church uh, down at the end and i mentioned it to these <laughs> these these tribe gazelles you know this is the building that i wanted and i'm telling you that is that is it the school of amazing the that's amazing so when you pray you know there's there's some tangibility here that we can pray for and catrice will come in and do all the artwork for us and make sure we would commission her to do it. I just, I just feel like God really wants to do this. And so Felicia, would you just lead us in prayer for this? Praise God. And before we God. go, thank you. Gracious God, we thank you so much. We're so full. Yes. We're so full of your presence, so full of your glory, so full of your anticipation. God, we just celebrate you, Holy Spirit, and what you're doing in our lives and in the lives of our bishop. Yes, we pray, God. God, your hand touch. We pray, God, your yes, breath, Lord. your ruach, God, that brings all of this to pass. God, yes, we God. thank you. We give you glory. We yes, edify, God. God, you. We give you all of this. None of this. None of us get the glory for this, but we give all of this yes, back to you yes. right now. Bless our bishop now as she goes, as she travels, as she speaks what she hears you say. Give her yes, what Lord. she needs, prop her up yes, on Lord. every leaning side and throw your weight around through her. And it's in the name of Jesus, the Christ Lord. that we pray and thank you. We thank say you, hallelujah, hallelujah and amen. Amen, amen. amen. and amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Glory, amen. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. We have the price tag, Bishop, so we know. Hallelujah. The, the um, I, I, I will uh, give me until next month to do that because I, I, this is such a story because that was at one point a clinic and then it became something else. And I kept watching it for taxes and somehow I missed it. And so the restaurant up on the corner picked it up for like, like 150,000, like nothing really. Oh, wow. So they're Chaldeans. And so I was in the process of with the lease to option to buy, but that means that I would do all the work on the inside. And during COVID, you know, everything just shut down and none of the contractors had staff. And even now, you know, people are just not now getting back to work. So <laughs> the other day, the owner drove by the church and said, I'll sell you the building for 750,000. I said, have you lost all of your wow. money? I said, get, get away, get out from in front of my church. But what I heard is that for me to procure the building, do the work and 
that might be the number mm. that I need to begin to pray about that 750,000. So I would say anywhere between 750 and a million is what oh, it's yeah. going to do to get everything up and running. So that, that million dollars would, would help us right away. Although we won't pay that for it, but I believe right. that the Whole. But we got seven hundred fifty thousand right now, though today. Right we here, right here, right here, yes. right here. Here we go. Absolutely, yeah, the million actually. The million. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, we do. Seriously, we do. Absolutely. And I, Absolutely. I said if if I took three hundred thousand to him in cash and offered it to him, maybe three fifty, he would take it. He would take it, and then we would we would own the building, and then we could start doing. But the picture is what I needed. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I needed the this picture, the right. visual. I needed this so that I could see. And I mean, it's the building is a concrete building. It's in excellent shape. It's nothing wrong with the building. It's solid. Everybody really? that's come through. And, and wow. it's, it's not a lot to get it up and rolling, about 250000 possibly, maybe even three to do all the decor and get everything together. But to, you know, to get the staffing in it and, and that kind of stuff. That that's what I'm looking for, and so three hundred people, one thousand dollars. Three hundred people, one thousand dollars. Yeah, and so when we get to camp meeting, uh, this is going to be on an easel. Yes. And, uh, this is where we will begin to sow uh, from camp meeting. That you know we can say, listen, this is what this is what we need. We need a hundred people with a thousand dollars, or five hundred people with a thousand. I remember that's it. There. That's all. my thousand. I'll show my thousand today, Bishop. That's what I'm talking about. That's not a problem. That's it. I can show mine today, too. I'm talking, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, man. You, go so to you already website. got 3,000 right there. Yeah, go to, the, go to the website <laughs> at uh, www.gotellit.org and sew it on the website. And that way it'll go into the Go Tell It ministry okay. uh, account. And we will make sure that that money is earmarked. For the oh, school of the Holy Spirit. Man, this wow. Is, this is amazing. It's, this it's is, a more on this call, though. I, I'm sure I, I want to be obedient, but it's a couple of more thousand on this call. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. It's a couple of more. Is it two more? It's at least two more. Amen. It's five thousand on it's five thousand right Amen. here before we before we log off. Amen. I listen, I agree in Jesus' name. <laughs> Y'all go to www.gotellit.org or paypal.me forward slash go tell it ministry and uh we, we this that will be the opening seat and of course the women start <laughs> Amen. Amen. i love y'all so Amen. much i love you. you guys thank y'all so so much this was delicious